I've just come into my workshop to shoot some video and every time I come in these days I get more and more upset about this corner that's just turned into a complete dumping ground of offcuts and sheet material. Although I've sorted out the shelving that's not 100% complete so I think I need to clear this area, make some benches and organise it so I can use it a lot more efficiently. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go to plan B, sort out this corner, put some benches in and a support for the bandsaw. But I've got something really important to do at half past five and it's midday already. So I've only got a few hours and no material. So I better get going. I've decided that this bench is going to be made out of 3x2 for the timber and 18mm MDF for the tops. While I'm here I'm also going to pick up a second sheet of MDF which I'll get them to cut down for my shelves. But not only has this shop now removed the bell that hopefully brings the man that operates the saw, but after a quick chat with someone I'm told that he's on his lunch break. I'm not quite sure why they don't just train more people to use the saw. So if one person isn't around, someone else just steps in. But anyway, I take the opportunity to go and find all the straight pieces of 3 by 2 in the building section. Although you can find timber cheaper in wood yards, at least a big shop like this, you can go through every piece and just take what you want. Once I found what I wanted, I put back all my rejects, ready for another unsuspecting DIYer to go through. After a look around the shop and a little bit more waiting, the guy finally came back from his lunch break and I got the MDF cut. Although I have the ability to bring back four sheets of MDF and cut them in my workshop, if the saw is available and it's free, I might as well get them to cut everything to the right size. It just saves on trying to lug a full sheet of MDF around the workshop. So back at base and I already feel that I've just wasted an hour getting the materials. Anyway, time to give it a good clear up and to take away all the materials from this corner. Although at this stage I don't really know where they're all going to go, but it's all got to get cleared anyway. These simple shelves are 8 foot long and I got the guy to cut the MDF into 300mm wide strips. And with a bit of notching out at the back, they fit my twin slot nicely. The first thing I want to do is fix a batten onto the wall that's nice and level. So I use my laser level, although at this point I don't actually know how much battery charge I've got in it. So just in case it's going to fail at any second, I mark the line on the wall just so I've got a reference. I've decided to aim for the joints for the fixing for this batten and it's not as if these fixings are going to have much pulling out force. They're essentially going to be in shear. So I think a nice long fixing into the mortar will be fine. Yes. 
This first side, I don't bother cutting down. This is exactly eight foot. And from the top, I screw the three by two batten to the underside of the MDF. That makes quite a nice, strong front face. With another length screwed onto the side, this will give a good bearing for the legs to support the bench. With the bench level using some temporary legs, I can now screw it in from the top into the batten that's on the wall, which gives it quite a lot of strength and support at the back. Using the same 3x2, I fix this on the back of the front batten, just simply with a couple of screws. And this now fixes the front level of it and supports this front batten quite nicely. So the second half of my MDF top comes in from this direction and marries up with this edge here of the one that I've just put in. And in theory, this is exactly 90 degrees, but in practice it may not be. The last thing I want to do is cut it to size at 90 degrees and then when I put it in place find that I'm tight at one end and a couple of millimetres of drift at the other because this angle here in this workshop isn't exactly 90. So what I'm going to do is cut it oversized by maybe 20 or 30 mil, offer it up and put it in place and then just scribe underneath between the existing and the new and then just cut a straight line and that may be 89 degrees or 92 degrees, it doesn't matter, it will be whatever it is and hopefully it should fit. Let's go to work. I'm tripping. With having to clear this corner, my workbench is at some strange angle and I'm absolutely surrounded by materials and tools, which isn't a nice way of working. But I know that I've got to get through this to be able to clear my workshop and get things organised for the future. I decided to use my old vintage skill saw because it's got a dust port on it rather than my battery operated DeWalt, which is an excellent saw but just doesn't have a dust port. If you're going to cut this, it's really important to use a proper respirator and to keep it on, not just once you've done the cut, but after the cut as well, quite literally until the dust settles. When I offer up the piece, it's rocking side to side because one of my bricks in this particular wall is sticking out by a few millimetres. So I decide to very roughly scribe around it and with a jigsaw just to adjust the back so it fits properly. With a few millimetres taken away with a jigsaw, it now just fits nicely. And I must say, after doing all of that, it couldn't have worked out better. I've got a nice joint here with no deviation from one end to the other. So that's all the legs now fixed in place, except for whatever I do around the bandsaw here. And you would notice that although these can take whatever load I put on them, I could sit on there no problem. At the bottom, they still can move because I haven't fixed them to the floor at all. Now, what I could do is a very simple L-shaped bracket at the back to stop it moving around, but I don't really want to see that. It's going to look a little bit rubbish. So what I'm going to do is I've got some threaded bar here from another job and I'm going to cut that into dowels maybe four or five inches long and also cut a hole in the bottom of each one of these legs and use it as a dowel into the leg and then drill a hole into the concrete 
and sit it in the concrete. That way, it won't stop it going up. But I don't think I need to because it's so heavy. I don't think I need to stop it going up. But it will stop it moving left and right, especially if I get frustrated at some point and give it a kick. To use dowels in this situation, I could actually use rebar or any type of steel rod. It's just that this 10mm threaded rod is what I've got available, so I might as well use it. To help me line up the hole in the floor and the hole in the bottom of the leg, I make a little bit of a jig out of an offcut that I can use in both of those situations just to make sure that the holes are in the same position and at the same angle. I use this bandsaw quite regularly and I like it being in the corner here but on this workbench it's just going to be too high I'm used to it being a lot lower so I've got the idea of cutting out the corner of the workbench and lowering it by 8 inches or 200 millimeters so it's got somewhere to sit and somewhere I can use it but it's also at the right height for me so I decide to position it at 45 degrees in the corner and then cut out some of the workbench and essentially make a lower box for it to sit in and where it can live for the next few years. I saw out the section I don't want using the skill saw and a tenon saw, including some upside down sawing, which was a first for me, and then get my table saw out so I can cut down some MDF to form this box that the band saw is going to sit in. To match up with the front of the bench, I put a 45 degree bevel on the side pieces using this slide in mitre slot thing on the table saw, which I must admit worked quite well. The box section I'm making is essentially hanging from the top of the workbench, but eventually I'll have a couple of legs underneath it just to give it some support. But the way I've made it does mean that I have to get underneath to screw it back up into the sides, which I must say was one of the nastiest jobs I've done so far in this workshop, and it does teach you to keep your mouth shut. I hope this fits. With the bandsaw section complete and in place, I can just pop in the last shelf, which I left off just for ease of construction.
So there you go. I've put a few bits and pieces back on the shelves here, but no doubt everything is going to fill up fairly quickly, especially this nice clean surface is going to get covered in no time at all. I've made sure that the top of this is high enough to be able to get two of the big IKEA boxes underneath because I find those fairly good for storage. And more importantly, it means I can also sit here and get my legs underneath, which I can't really on my workbench. So this is just uh, an inch or two higher than my workbench, which I find quite nice as storage. Probably not so good if you're using it as a workbench. And obviously I've got used to this being at this height because it's been on another one of my temporary workbenches. So I've just replicated it. And if, it's, if I'm using a piece that's just too big to get in here, I'll just take it to my workbench, fuse it over there, and then bring it back again. So that was quite a tough afternoon, especially being upside down under there, screwing that bottom plate on. That wasn't very pleasant at all. And I'm absolutely covered in sawdust from top to bottom. I felt as if I was against the clock all afternoon, which I was. But I've just about made my half five appointment with something very special. And I think I deserve it as well. So I will see you next time. Hmm.